Miami Heat postgame show. The Miami Heat defeated the Boston Celtics 111 to 101 at the Boston TD Garden or whatever the hell it's called these days. The Miami Heat are the best team in the NBA. We're going to win a championship. We got to trade Jimmy Butler and build around Tyler Hero. We, he's not ready for an extension yet. He's only in his second year of his deal, but extend him. It's Tyler's team. We got to build around Tyler and Bam. I don't know about you guys. I am shocked and very happy and very excited. I had the adrenaline going through my veins. Complete opposite of last game was like barely paying attention on my phone. Just sad, depressed, even though I knew we were going to lose the first game. But this game, we came out with some intensity. The story of the game is the three-pointers. I mean, we shot 62% of all of our shots were threes. That's only happened four times in NBA history across four games. It's only happened four times. Like, we were doing nothing but shooting threes, and we set a franchise record for, what was it, 22, 23, whatever the hell it was. Let me look it up. 23 out of 43, 53%. Guys, the Miami Heat stole one on the road, and I just absolutely love it. Martel, what are your thoughts on the game, buddy? This is why we have the best coach in the NBA, because they made the adjustments. Because last game, they were trying to double guys. No, play them Play them one-on-one. -on -one. Even if they score, I'd rather them take the mid-range. I'd rather them go to the free throw line or try to drive to the rim than them feel confident because that's what was kind of different with last game and this game. Last game, they felt way too confident shooting that three ball. Of course, they're always going to go on their runs. Of course, they're going to rely more on the three, but you can't give guys like Hauser, you know, and Peyton Pritchard, you can't give them wide open shots and build their confidence throughout the game because you already have to deal with Porzingis, Drew, you know, Tatum and Brown. So I think that with this game especially, they did a great job on the defensive end, and it lasted pretty much within the four quarters because sometimes they do play great defense, but then it drops off dramatically. They played together as a team. Jovic and Jaime, to be honest, I'm very close to saying that they're untradeable only because think about what they're doing. Under man, no Jimmy Butler at their age, and Jaime's attacking them. And, um, bro, I, uh, like I think it was Ethan who just said it like on Twitter. They don't fear the Boston Celtics. You see Jovis, you see Jaime attacking these veteran guys, shooting the three ball, getting to the free throw line, doing the things that veterans are supposed to be doing. Same thing with Tyler Hero. I know that me and Trent and a lot of other people are very critical of Tyler Hero, but this is, this is what we want to see. We're not talking about anything else. We're not trying to attack him about anything but basketball. He's the $100 million man. These are the moments that he has to deliver. Bam Adebayo can't do everything by himself. He had, what, 24 and uh, 14 assists? The playmaking and the scoring and the efficiency, that's all we expect from Tyler Hero. Just we need to give him his flowers. He dominated only three turnovers. He did get picked on one play by Drew, but, like, obviously Drew is one of the best on-ball defenders. Um, but 14 to three, like, that ratio right there, insane for Tyler Hero. Like, that was a huge game. It's just can he do it consistently? We're not Tyler stands. We're not Tyler haters. We're in between. We're like, hey, we like him. We think he's fine. I don't know about Trent. Obviously, I'm not going to speak for Trent. But speaking probably for myself and Martel, we like Tyler. He's on our team. He's a good young player. But he annoys us, and we're objective. What did he do today objectively? He shot well. He was aggressive. He found his teammates in the right spot, had some good plays with Bam out of bio, and was efficient like and just be consistent and be available those are the things we get upset about it's like we don't criticize him all the time we criticize all the players like we're objective with anybody if bam has a bad game we're gonna cook him if jimmy has a bad game we're gonna talk about it. if spo does some bad mistakes and doesn't adjust we're gonna talk crap on spo anyway so yeah for all you tyler stands out there we don't hate tyler like we just hope he can do this now in game three and in game four and we don't need 25 30 points from him Give us like 18, 19, 20. Get your season averages and shoot efficiently. That's all we're asking for. Trent, hop in, man. What do you think about this game? What are your thoughts? Man, I'm excited for my team, man. You know what I mean? I always said we're going to win one or two games. This is one of the games that we stole at their home. So we're going back home to Miami. And um, anything could possibly happen. But um, I will say, though, you know, the Heat are 10-3 and three after game one losses under um, Eric Spoelstra. So, just shows how good of a coach he is of the adjustments. And a lot of coaches don't change adjustments. You know, they win game one or they lose game one, and they do the same thing out there. Now, um, hitting 23 threes is the main reason why we won this game because what's the main reason why the Celtics won the first game is because they 
hit so many threes too. Um, the reason why I'm not really scared of the Celtics if this team was healthy is just because Celtics live and die off the threes. Like if they're not hitting, they're not a good team. If they're hitting, they're very, very good. I think it's it's simple as that. Um, but I mean, I'm happy, man. Tyler finally showed up. That's all I'm asking for you to do, my boy. You get paid. I get paid to go to work. You get paid to go to work too. Um, but you underperform and and a lot of people criticize you, but 24 points and 14 assists, seven for 13, six for 11 at the three point line is all that's 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 wonderful. Um, and also, man, shout out to Bam, man. He Bam did what I wanted Bam to do all season and all um playoffs work on that mid range. And he hit every single mid range that I watched when I was watching that game. He just wasn't missing. It was like he was just confident, his rhythm was on point, he was doing his thing, man. So you know, the big two stepped up. Maybe Udonis Haslam needs to stay in Tyler Hero's air more often. And um, let's go to Miami. Let's see what we can do, man. Like I said, the, the percentage of us winning this series is low. But let's just make it a dog fight. Let's make Boston think that, you know, let's make them lose hope. And another thing I will say before I, I give it to y'all is, where was Porzingis? Like, <laughs> Porzingis 6.8 rebounds, 4 assists, 1 for 9? That's what y'all traded Porzingis for? To get rattled by Jaime, Jovic, Bam. Like, I get Bam's the best defender in the league, but whew, six points? You cannot do that, man. So, shout out to the Miami Heat for winning the game, man, and hopefully we get Terry next game. I'm on mute. Yeah, yeah. I was saying shout out to playoff Caleb Martin for showing up uh, to work today. Um, that was huge because – from the get, he started touching the ball. The stupid, fickle, petty Boston fans were freaking booing him for something stupid. We don't even talk about Scalabrini's stupid comments about him uh, or saying that Caleb Martin intentionally um, fouled Jason Tatum and then, you know, that Spo called a code red and a timeout and all that stupid stuff. Um, but every time he touched the ball, he was getting booed. But this man stepped up and hit timely three-pointer after three-pointer after three-pointer and then also in that third and fourth quarter was getting to the rim and showing that athleticism and that confidence like again they aren't scared of this boston team and whenever i noticed like when jalen brown or tatum were guarding like jaime and, and uh, caleb they're playing downhill like they're not worried about them as much defensively as you would a Derek white like the back the backcourt, you know, is what you need to worry about more is the Derek Whites and the, the holidays. Um, but yeah, shout out to Caleb Martin, man. Like, what are your thoughts on that? Like, I was just happy that he finally showed up and he looked good. They, they all shot the ball with confidence. The last game, they're passing up shots because, it, you know, they might not be wide open. This game, every time they touch the ball and the defender was a few feet away, they're taking the shot. I would rather you got – I'd rather the team shoot 100 shots – then, you know, only take 40 and miss out on the rest. And I think it's the confidence. Caleb Martin, who's playing with confidence, you know, they're all hearing the rumors about, you know, what Scalabrini and all these idiots are saying. So Caleb Martin came out tonight. And to be honest, he's also playing for that contract. You know what I mean? So we are going to need everybody, all hands on deck. And once again, I, I have to shout out the rookies again, Jaime and Jovic. They played phenomenal. They Because to be honest, it's so hard to find young talent that can actually prosper, especially in the playoffs in Boston, and you're missing two of your starters. Now, when it comes to Terry Rozier today, he said that he is coming back for this series. Obviously, I'm sure he's not going to be 100%, but I'd rather have Terry at 80 than not have him at all. And at least that's another guy where he can take the pressure off of Tyler and Bam. He can create his own shot, and he's just another viable threat and another offensive option for this Miami Heat team. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we let the Jays cook on that other end and they had 61 points combined and we won like again yes i know it's the three-point shooting that was the major factor because boston shot their season average which is 38 percent, which was the number one three-point shooting percentage in the nba they were the number one shooting team in the nba they made 12 out of 32 that's pretty damn good but the jays oh my god we just played them straight up and we said hey you are gonna cook us you're going to get some BS calls because Jason Tatum had got so many soft calls, which is fine. He's a superstar. He got that whistle. But we played them straight up and said, we're not going to give Perzingas. We're not going to give Derek White. We're not going to give Drew. We're not going to give freaking Doogie Hauser, Sam Hauser, whatever the hell that guy's name is. 
that's like a reference to like an 80s show even though i was you guys are too young to get that one but it was that was before my time also but anyway um we're like we're not gonna let these guys get wide open threes and cook us like we're, we'll let jason and like tatum you know jason uh, tatum and brown get some tough shots one-on-one but we put bam on jason to start the game which i liked and i think caleb was guarding jalen brown at times um he did dominate duncan robinson every time duncan was on on brown but either way i like the strategy i was listening to playback on for five reasons and ethan was saying hey i think i like the strategy um where we're going to guard them straight up and not let the others beat us we're not going to do zone like i'm sure i don't know if they did or not like maybe like one or two times they did zone but that's one of the adjustments Spo realized that, you know, Porzingis is a really good anti-zone type of player at the nail, catches the ball, and he's a good distributor. He could just turn around and shoot the ball. And so that was one big adjustment was not playing zone, playing them straight up, and not letting the others beat us. And so what a good what a good strategy by Spo. I mean, again, the best coach by far in the NBA. And what I love is my friend is a Lakers fan, and he's like, the my, one they didn't watch the game. He's like, "Oh my god, the Heat won." He's like, "I wish I had a real coach." We have Darvin freaking Ham right now. Like, he's like, "Literally, you guys have the best coach in the NBA. It must be nice to have that that strategist." But anyway, Trent, what are your thoughts for Game Three on Saturday? I don't know if Terry's going to play. Martel City's going to come back at some point. They said he was initially going to miss the first three games. I think they said likely they projected two. But yeah, I thought I thought I read something too where that he could miss possibly the first three. But either way, what are your thoughts? You know, let's say Terry doesn't play, but what are your thoughts going home on on Saturday? Man, listen, I need to know what the hell happened to Terry, and I don't know if we'll ever find out because I don't understand how you're out that long with a neck injury. It just doesn't make sense to me at all to this moment. And this is what I'm saying with the Heat, like they just be hiding injuries. I swear, because bro, a neck injury is taking you out for this long. Like, I don't know, man. But um, anyways, game three is going to be tough. Even though we're home, we got the crowd uh, with us and stuff like, like that. But hitting threes is probably not going to happen again. You know what I mean? Um, And Przingis making only one nine, that's probably not going to happen again. But um, the Miami Heat have the toughness, like you said earlier, is that we don't fear them. Like, and if this team just continues to keep doing what they're doing, um, I think I think we just make it a ball game, right? Um, I feel like if we if it's close in the end, I think we can win. I really do. But if it's a blowout like how it was last time and stuff like that, then it's gonna be tough to win games. Um, but let's just make it close through row. And honestly, thought that's what's gonna happen today. He's gonna make a close, close game and see what happens at the end. But, um, you know, you're going to expect a big game from Drew coming up or Przingis, and um, we just got to keep doing what we got to do. Maybe we can go another game with 23 threes. But, yeah. That would be a, mir- that would be a miracle. But, I mean, hey, we're going home. Got to protect home. We stole home court advantage now, right? We haven't lost that home yet, so we have home court advantage. Um. I don't think the Miami Heat can win both, but I want to be wrong. I want us to be completely wrong. I want this to be like the biggest upset in NBA history because I think it would be because of the the caliber of this Boston's offense, historic, one of the best offenses in the history of the NBA, number one in offense, number two in defense, has multiple all-stars on this team, all NBA type of defensive players, and this would be one of the biggest upsets. So. It's an eight has beaten a one seed six times in NBA history. That's it. It's only happened six times out of like 40 years. And the Miami Heat did it last year, but it wasn't under the same circumstances. Right. So we had Jimmy Butler. Uh, We didn't have Tyler Hero, but still, that was incredible that we won it last year. If we if we somehow win this, this would be the greatest upset, I think, like in NBA history. Um, and the irony, what's if we do this without Jimmy Butler? What's if we win a championship without Jimmy Butler available? We finally win a ring and Jimmy gets a ring by, like, by not playing. That would be hilarious, the irony of that. But obviously I don't think – I don't know if the C team can win another game. I'm hoping they can win one out of the two at I home. Think they can. I think they can. They, with the intensity, because I'm telling you, you, you have to – because we have a very small margin for error. 
So yep. this Miami Heat team, Jaime, he was attacking the rim, getting to the free throw line. Jovic, he didn't hesitate to shoot not once. He shot every time he was in the corner, he shot the ball. That's what you need. If they play with the passion and the fire and the intensity, that's half the battle. Because like you can see, Boston's very mentally weak. And I'm very surprised that they're that mentally weak. And it's kind of like what Trent said is that, you know, our coach actually makes the adjustment. Kevin Love pretty much played. He played a lot more than he did in game one. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Also, too, I think that Thomas Bryant can even get some minutes as well. Why? Because he's going to bring the energy. He's going to bring the passion. That's what you need. You need guys that are going to be hungry. And our young guys, and I'm very happy about this, our young guys, especially Jaime and Jovic, they're hungry. You see that they're not shying away. You see that they want to give 110%. They're, they're playing well above their means compared to, you know, what everybody else thought going into the series. Yeah. No, I definitely agree. It's all about the intensity, but it's all about shooting well. So Of course. <laughs> of course. But, you, but the, okay, so what I mean by the intensity, you're not hesitating. It's go, every time you catch that ball, it's go time. If you can build up that confidence, which, that's what they did from the first quarter. That's how they were able to end the fourth quarter. Jaime Hawkins Jr. is not one of the best three-point shooters. But what they were taking it all throughout the game, taking shots, taking shots, taking shots. So guess what? In the fourth quarter, everything I put up, I'm going to have the confidence to knock it down. It's a make or miss league, they say, right? If you're not making shit, you're getting your ass beat. So if we make enough shots on Saturday, we could take all the momentum and show Boston – that they're a fraud of a franchise in the last 35 years. They have had one championship in 2008, and they have not won another championship before that since the 80s, basically. Like, they've won one championship in the last 35 years. They have not been a relevant franchise. And all the stupid Boston fans on Twitter are going to say 18 rings, 18 rings. Okay, so that's fine. That's when there was, like, eight teams in the NBA, 12 teams in the NBA in the 60s. Uh, African Americans weren't allowed to play back then. And then also, like, they were making no money, so these guys had side jobs. So they're playing against freaking janitors and milkmen and freaking whatever, FedEx drivers, you know? Like, they literally had side jobs in the 50s and 60s, literally. So, yeah, great. You guys won 12 championships in the freaking 60s and 70s. Good for you guys. But they haven't been a relevant franchise really since the early or the late 2000s, right, 2008. Um, and I love it. I absolutely love it because I hate this Boston Celtics. Um and let's shock the world. Let's see what can happen. We're playing on house money at this point right now, right? Like, no Jimmy Butler, no Rozier. Like, don't be surprised, though. Don't be surprised because I'm telling you right now, if there's one team in it, the, if there's one team in the NBA to do it, we're that one team. You see what I'm yeah. saying? Two we're, words. We are that one team. If it's not us, then I don't know. But we're that one team that could at least get two more games. What's that? What's the two words that defines us? Come on. Heat culture, baby. That's heat culture, right? That's that's why, like, we, we're hand, like whenever we're undermanned, it's that whole BS cliche, right? The next man is always stay, like whatever Adonis said. Also, like, stay ready so you don't have to get ready. Like, we're ready. Like, these guys have been ready all year for this opportunity, and let's get another W, man. Let's. I might come to Miami. We'll see if I'm crazy enough to get a red eye for tomorrow, and and actually see this team in person, which I thought there's no chance I would once Jimmy got hurt, but who knows? Maybe I can convince myself to do something crazy and fly across the country to see this team like the initial plan was. But anyway, Martel, any last words before we hop off? Like, share, comment, subscribe. Listen, subscribe to Amir's channel, Trent, mine, and also Ernest. Let's get these subs up. Thank you, guys. Have a good night.